Well, there aren't that many cars that have the legacy that the DeLorean did. John Zachary DeLorean was working for General Motors, who worked his way up to become the youngest division general manager at the age of 40. Eventually said, you know what, I'm done with you guys, I'm done with this corporate culture, and ultimately said, what I want to do is build a car that is really the antithesis of everything General Motors was doing, or, or really not just General Motors, but the American automotive industry in general. I'm gonna build a car that's, that's eco-friendly, safe to drive, conserves fuel resources, and it's gonna be a hit, everybody's gonna want one. And I'm gonna call it uh, the DeLorean, because that's kind of a cool name, and it's my name, and people know me, and they would connect the car to me. He got Giorgetto Giugiaro of uh, Ital Design to, to pen this incredibly sexy body um, for the car, and he gave it gullwing doors. Well, it was a more a styling affection than a necessity for the DeLorean DMC-12. It really wasn't a, a 12. I think it was kind of interesting that he would call it that. It had a Peugeot, Renault, Volvo-derived V6 engine. Now today, a DeLorean is unusual. And I don't think very many people would know what a DeLorean was if it wasn't for the Back to the Future franchise. In the original first two drafts of Back to the Future, the time machine was a time chamber built out of an old refrigerator, which Doc had to transport around on the back of a pickup truck. Well, finally, in the summer of 1984, we got the movie into pre-production. And now Bob Zemeckis has his director's hat on, and he's thinking about, how am I gonna shoot this, and how am I gonna shoot that? And one morning, he comes in the office, and he says, hey, Bob, I got an idea. What if Doc Brown built the time machine into a car so it would be mobile? And that way, we wouldn't have to load it on the back of a pickup truck and unload it. So that's a lot of logistics that we're gonna have to be doing. I said, that's a damn good idea. And then he said, what if the car was a DeLorean? Well, why a DeLorean? Because John DeLorean was on trial during the summer of 1984. And we saw John DeLorean on TV news every night. Uh, of course, he was acquitted, it was all set up. But nevertheless, the car company was in the news. It now had this extra level of notoriety. And look, the DeLorean is one of the coolest cars ever in the history of automobiles, but the gullwing doors were just a fabulous, fabulous element that pushed us over the edge and said, yeah, we got it. We got to do a DeLorean. We generally have anywhere between 30 and 50 cars on site at any given time. Uh, most of them are all customer-owned cars here for service, restoration. People often ask me, um, how do you transition from being a car mechanic to owning a car company? It just happened organically. It wasn't really a master plan or anything like that. Started working on DeLoreans. People were running away from them. Nobody wanted to touch them. Was able to buy all of the remaining inventory of parts for the DeLorean. And then it was like, okay, what are we gonna do with this? And started looking and was able to pick up all of the intellectual property. Then obviously the next thing to do was look at all this inventory that I've got and think about remaking the car. We're often asked, you know, whose engine are you going to use? And it was only an engine five, six years ago. Now, with the electric cars becoming more and more popular, you know, whether it's a hybrid, whether it's electric, we haven't really decided yet. As the time goes by, more and more doors are opening up as far as uh, battery packs, drivetrains, collaborations with various manufacturers. In regards, again, to the new car, people ask, what's it going to look like? Well, it's a replica. It's going to look like the original car. You know, I do not want to mess with that shape. You know, that, that silhouette is iconic for the car. Uh, the stainless skin is iconic for this car. The gullwing doors, you know, I just want to improve the mechanical aspect of the car and then all of the um, issues that we've dealt with uh, with the original car, try and address as many of those issues as possible and make it that we have a much better package for, for the new car. I personally would like it to be electric, 
but it has to be a good and safe car as well as have a, a good performance and good drivability um, and that's going to be a challenge. It's not like we're designing a car from the ground up. We're going to be dealing with the existing infrastructure of the car. All things being equal, we'll be able to package it correctly and then we'll, we shall see what we come up with. <laughs>